How to Hear God in Silence Written and published by God Daily News To hear God in silence, start by creating a quiet space, both physically and mentally. Adopt a state of mindfulness and stillness, akin to Psalm 46 verse 10, Be still, and know that I am God. Focus on surrendering to His presence. Engage in prayer and meditate on scriptures to better understand His voice. Familiarize yourself with the way God communicates, which often aligns with His Word. Stay patient and trust in His timing. Remember, recognizing God's promptings is an ongoing spiritual journey, one that requires faith and diligence. There's plenty more wisdom to glean from your pursuit of hearing God in silence. Chapter 1 Understanding the Power of Silence In the vast expanse of God's creation, Few things hold as much power and potential as the profound silence that invites divine communication. The Bible, in 1 Kings 19 verse 12, illustrates God speaking to Elijah not in the wind, earthquake, or fire, but in a gentle whisper, emphasizing the importance of silence in identifying God's voice. You've probably experienced moments of silence in your life, either intentionally or unintentionally. However, have you ever considered silence as a spiritual discipline? It's a space where God's voice can be heard distinctly, where His messages aren't lost among the noise of the world. It's a form of surrender, an act of trust in God's presence even when you can't physically perceive Him. Drawing from biblical examples, silence plays a significant role in fostering a deeper connection with God. It's in silence where the psalmist declares, Be still, and know that I'm God, Psalm 46 verse 10. It's in silence where Jesus often withdrew to pray, Luke 5 verse 16. It's in silence where the heart, uncluttered by the world's distractions, can focus solely on God. But understanding the power of silence is just the first step. To fully harness this power, it requires intentional practice, cultivating a heart that's open to God's whispers. It's not about you speaking, it's about you listening, ready to receive God's words, His guidance, and His reassurances. Remember, God doesn't shout, He whispers. And in the profound silence, His voice is heard most clearly. Chapter 2 Setting the Stage for Listening To truly tap into the power of silence and hear God's whispers, you'll need to set the stage for listening, a process that requires intentional preparation and commitment. This stage setting is far more than a physical act, it's a spiritual discipline, an exercise in humility and surrender. It's about preparing your heart and mind to receive God's message with openness and faith. Begin with prayer. Ask God to cleanse your heart and renew your mind. Your prayer should express your genuine desire to hear from Him, acknowledging that His wisdom surpasses your own. The Bible reassures us that if we ask for wisdom, God will generously give it without finding fault, James 1 verse 5. Next, you've got to clear your mind. The world is loud, filled with distractions that can drown out God's voice. You're not just seeking physical silence, but mental and spiritual stillness as well. This mental decluttering is necessary to make space for God's voice. Psalm 46 verse 10 encourages us to be still and know that I'm God. Finally, cultivate an expectant heart. When you approach God with faith, believing that He'll speak to you, you're setting the stage for divine revelation. Hebrews 11 verse 6 tells us that, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Setting the stage for listening isn't an overnight process. It's a journey that requires patience, diligence, and ongoing faith. But remember, the reward is well worth the effort, a deeper, more intimate relationship with God. Chapter 3 Cultivating a Quiet Space Creating a quiet space, both within and around you, isn't about finding a noise-free environment, rather, it's about cultivating an atmosphere conducive to hearing God's voice. This requires intentionality and discipline, as the world can be loud and busy, often distracting us from our spiritual pursuits. In this context, a quiet space is more of a state of mind than a physical location. Certain biblical examples illustrate this concept. 
Consider Elijah's encounter with God in 1 Kings 19 verses 11 to 13. God wasn't in the powerful wind, earthquake or fire, but in the gentle whisper. This indicates that God often speaks in a still, small voice, which can be drowned out by noise, both external and internal. You can cultivate a quiet space around you by setting aside a dedicated time and place for prayer and meditation. This could be a secluded spot in your home, a peaceful outdoor setting, or even a quiet corner in a bustling city. This space should be free from distractions that can disrupt your focus. Cultivating a quiet space within you is a bit more complex. It involves quieting your thoughts, emotions, and desires, which often compete for attention. This inner tranquility can be achieved through practices such as prayer, Bible reading, and meditation on God's Word. These exercises help in centering your mind on God and His truths. Chapter 4 Practicing Mindfulness and Stillness Mindfulness and stillness, two crucial practices in your spiritual journey, help you tune into God's presence and hear His voice more clearly. But what do these terms mean, and how can you incorporate them into your daily life? Mindfulness, in a spiritual context, refers to being fully present and aware in each moment, acknowledging your thoughts, emotions, and physical feelings without judgment. This practice, rooted in biblical teaching, allows you to be more receptive to the subtle whispers of God. You're not distracted by the past or anxious about the future, you're completely engaged in the now. Psalm 46 verse 10 says, Be still, and know that I'm God. This verse perfectly encapsulates the essence of stillness. Stillness doesn't mean inactivity, but rather a calming of the mind and spirit, creating a tranquil inner space where you can clearly hear God's voice. To practice mindfulness and stillness, start with just a few minutes each day. Find a quiet space, close your eyes, and focus on your breathing. As thoughts come, acknowledge them, then let them go, returning your focus to your breath. It's not about emptying your mind, but rather cultivating a non-judgmental awareness of each moment. Chapter 5 Surrendering to God's Presence As you cultivate mindfulness and stillness, surrendering to God's presence becomes an essential next step in your spiritual journey. Surrender isn't a state of resignation or defeat, but rather a profound acceptance, a laying down of resistance to the divine will. It's a yielding to God's love, mercy, and wisdom a recognition of His sovereignty over your life. Scripture emphasizes the importance of surrender. Romans 12 verse 1 implores us to present ourselves as a living sacrifice to God, a spiritual act of worship. This surrender isn't a one-time event, it's a constant, daily choice to submit to God's authority and guidance. To surrender yourself to God's presence, quiet your mind and open your heart to Him. This isn't passive, but an active resting in the truth of His existence and His love for you. In Psalm 46 verse 10, we're instructed to be still and know that I'm God. This knowing comes from a place of surrender, a place of trust in God's wisdom and goodness. In the silence, let go of your expectations and preconceived notions. Allow yourself to be shaped and guided by God's Word and His Spirit. Surrendering to God's presence isn't about losing yourself, but rather finding your true identity in Him. Chapter 6 Finding Peace in Solitude While surrendering to God's presence in silence, you'll often find an unexpected companion, a profound peace that emerges in your solitude. This is a peace that surpasses all understanding, as described in Philippians 4 verse 7. It isn't a peace created by you or the world, but a divine peace gifted by God. In your solitude, it's essential to understand that this peace isn't an escape from the world, but a sanctuary within it. It's a peace that exists amidst the storms, not apart from them. It's a testament to Psalm 46 verse 10, Be still, and know that I'm God. Solitude, by its nature, implies quietness and stillness, providing a perfect environment for this peace to bloom. In fact, Solitude can be a sacred space where you're unaffected by worldly anxieties and can hear God's whispers more clearly. This notion aligns with Matthew 6 verse 6, which encourages you to enter your inner room, close the door, 
and pray to your Father in secret. Finding peace in solitude doesn't mean you're isolating yourself from others or ignoring your responsibilities. Rather, it's about seeking a quiet place within where you can commune with God without distractions. It's about cultivating a heart that remains at peace, even in the midst of chaos. Lastly, remember that finding peace in solitude is a process, a spiritual journey rather than a destination. It's about continuous growth in faith, understanding, and maturity. Embrace it, and you'll find it becomes an integral part of your spiritual journey. Chapter 7 Opening Your Heart to Receive Begin the journey of opening your heart by embracing the divine mystery that God wants to share with you. This isn't a process you should rush, but one that should occur naturally, with patience and reverence. The Lord speaks to those who are ready and willing to truly listen. Opening your heart to receive God's message necessitates a spirit of humility and trust. As Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6 states, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways submit to Him, and He'll make your path straight. Accept that you don't have all the answers, and let God's wisdom fill that space. Now, it's important to remember that hearing God's voice isn't always a literal voice. He communicates in a myriad of ways, through His Word, the Bible, through circumstances, and even through other believers. So, keep your heart and mind open, ready to receive whatever He may reveal. Letting go of preconceived notions is also key. You mustn't limit God's communication to your own expectations. His ways are infinitely more profound than ours, as Isaiah 55 verses 8 to 9 reminds us, For my thoughts aren't your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. Ultimately, opening your heart to receive from God is a transformative process that deepens your relationship with Him. It's a journey that requires faith, humility, and a genuine desire to understand and follow His will. Embrace this journey with an open heart and you'll find yourself immersed in the divine love and wisdom of God. Chapter 8 Embracing the Gift of Silence In your journey to hear God, embracing the gift of silence is a crucial step, for it's in the quiet moments that His voice often resonates the loudest. The Bible emphasizes this repeatedly, urging us to be still and know that I'm God, Psalm 46 verse 10. Silence, in this context, is more than just the absence of sound, it's an intentional act of creating a sacred space to encounter God. Silence is a gift we often overlook due to our busy lives. Yet, it's in these peaceful moments that we can truly tune into God's frequency. St. John of the Cross, a 16th century mystic, eloquently referred to this as the silent music, the divine symphony that's only heard when one quiets the mind and soul. Embracing silence allows you to delve deeper into the realm of faith, enabling you to hear God's soft whisper above the noise of the world. Elijah, the prophet, discovered this in 1 Kings 19 verses 11 to 12. After a powerful wind, an earthquake, and a fire, God spoke to him not in the grand displays of power, but in a gentle whisper, a quiet voice. Therefore, you're not merely seeking silence, you're seeking God in the silence. This requires discipline, patience, and a humble heart ready to listen. Remember, silence isn't an empty void, but a fullness of God's presence. Embrace it, cherish it, and let it lead you closer to Him. This is an integral part of your journey to hearing God amidst the silence. Chapter 9 Letting Go of Distractions Noise-cluttered lives can often become a barrier in your spiritual journey, making it crucial to let go of distractions to truly hear God in the silence. It's not just about the physical noise around you, but also the mental and emotional clutter that can cloud your perception and sense of God's presence. In the Bible, Ecclesiastes 3 verse 7 tells us there's a time to be silent and a time to speak. This highlights the importance of silence in our spiritual lives. But to embrace this silence, you need to first let go of distractions. This includes both external distractions like the din of the world around you, and internal distractions such as your worries, fears, and endless thoughts. Letting go isn't always easy, but it's necessary. 
It's about surrendering, releasing control, and trusting in God's plan. You might think you're not in control of your distractions, but you can influence your reaction to them. You have the power to choose how you respond. Remember, God speaks in the silence of the heart. To hear Him, you need to quiet your mind and focus on Him. Practice mindfulness, live in the present moment, and gradually, you'll find the distractions starting to fade away. In the silence, God's voice becomes clearer. His guidance, reassurance, and love become more evident. Don't let distractions drown out God's voice. Instead, let go and listen. It's in this silence that you can truly connect with God, hear His message, and deepen your faith. Chapter 10 Creating a Sacred Atmosphere Once you've managed to let go of distractions, it's essential to create a sacred atmosphere that invites God's presence and facilitates quiet communion with Him. This atmosphere, imbued with reverence and spirituality, becomes a sanctuary where you can converse with the divine in silence. Creating such an environment hinges on both physical and spiritual elements. Physically, choose a quiet, clean and comfortable space where you won't be disturbed. It can be a specific room in your house, a corner in your garden, or even a quiet spot in a nearby park. The physical comfort and tranquility of your chosen space contribute significantly to your ability to focus and be still in God's presence. Spiritually, consecrate your chosen space with prayer, asking God to fill it with His Holy Spirit. This act of consecration sets your space apart for God's use and invites His presence. As written in Matthew 18 verse 20, For where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. Here, you're gathering in your sacred space to meet with God, and He promises to be present. Additionally, you might find it helpful to include some symbols of your faith in your sacred space. This could be a cross, a Bible, or anything that helps you focus on God. Chapter 11 Praying in Silence and Stillness Embracing silence and stillness in prayer allows you to deepen your connection with God, fostering a sense of peace and spiritual clarity that often eludes us in our bustling, everyday lives. This serene state of being can be a potent conduit for divine communication, allowing you to genuinely hear and discern God's voice amid the clamor of worldly distractions. Consider Jesus' example in the Bible. He often retreated to quiet places to pray, Luke 5 verse 16, demonstrating the significance of solitude and silence in a robust prayer life. You too can follow this example, taking time to quiet your surroundings and your heart before God. This practice isn't about emptying your mind, but rather about focusing your thoughts and attentions on God. Stillness, on the other hand, isn't merely physical quietude. It's a state of spiritual rest, a release from worry and striving. As Psalm 46 verse 10 instructs us, Be still, and know that I'm God. This involves releasing control, and trusting your concerns to God and waiting patiently for His guidance. In this stillness, you'll find that the cacophony of your worries subsides, and you're able to hear God's whispering voice more clearly. Chapter 12 Reflecting on God's Word As you delve deeper into silence and stillness, reflecting on God's Word becomes an integral part of your spiritual journey. It's not merely about reading the Bible. It's about pondering, considering, and ruminating over what you've read. It's letting the Word of God permeate your very being, letting it shape your thoughts and actions. The book of Joshua, 1 8, instructs, Keep this book of the law always on your lips, meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Here, the Bible clearly emphasizes the need for reflection. It's not a one-time act but a continuous, daily practice. It's not merely about knowing God's Word but understanding and living it. Adopt a humble and receptive heart as you reflect on Scripture. You're not there to judge the Word, but to let the Word judge you, to reveal areas in your life that need God's healing and transformation. Hebrews 4 verse 12 affirms this, stating that the Word of God is alive and active. Sharper than any double-edged sword, it penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow, it judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. 
In your silent times with God, let the Holy Spirit illuminate your understanding. Let Him guide you into all truth, John 16 verse 13. As you reflect on God's Word, you'll gain not just knowledge, but wisdom and revelation. These are the treasures that come from hearing God in the silence. Chapter 13 Meditating on Scripture Regularly immersing yourself in Scripture is an essential step toward deepening your spiritual connection with God. It's not merely about reading the Bible, it's about meditating on the Word, allowing it to permeate your heart and mind. This deliberate, thoughtful process cultivates an environment where you can hear God in the silence. Meditation on Scripture is an ancient practice. The psalmist wrote, I meditate on your precepts and consider your ways, Psalm 119 verse 15. It's an active engagement with the Word, a contemplative method of reading that seeks to understand God's messages and how they apply to your life. To meditate effectively, you need to slow down. Choose a verse or passage. Read it slowly, deliberately, multiple times. Reflect on each word, each phrase. What does it say about God? About mankind? About you? Picture it. Let the words form images in your mind. Imagine being in the situation the verse describes. How would it feel? What would you see, hear, smell, touch? Imagination can bring scripture to life, making it more than words on a page but a living reality. Finally, pray about it. Ask God for understanding, for insight. Let the words of the scripture guide your prayers. Let them shape your thoughts and actions. In silence, listen for his response. Meditating on scripture isn't a quick fix, it's a lifelong journey. But it's a journey that brings you closer to God, that lets you hear his voice in the silence. It's a journey worth taking. Chapter 14 Seeking God's Will in Silence In your quest to hear God's voice, seeking His will in the silence can often be a profound and transformative experience. This practice, although challenging, is essential in developing a closer relationship with the Lord. It's about surrendering your thoughts, yielding your mind, and opening your heart to the divine whisperings of God. Silence isn't simply an absence of noise. It's a sacred space where you can encounter God in a deeper, more intimate way. This spiritual discipline, deeply rooted in biblical tradition, allows you to listen attentively to God's voice beyond the clatter and chatter of the world. Biblically, numerous figures, including Jesus, sought solitude and silence to discern God's will. In Luke 5 verse 16, it's written that Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. It's in these quiet moments, you'll find the opportunity to seek God's will sincerely. In the silence, you're not just listening for God's voice, but also for His guidance, His wisdom, and His peace. However, seeking God's will in silence doesn't mean you'll always hear a clear answer. Sometimes, God's silence is His response, inviting you to trust Him. Remember Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways submit to Him, and He'll make your path straight. Chapter 15 Waiting Patiently for God's Voice You may find that waiting patiently for God's voice is a crucial step in your spiritual journey, allowing for the cultivation of trust, faith, and deeper understanding of His divine plan. This aspect of waiting isn't a passive state but an active, expectant one. As you wait, you're not only expecting God to speak but you're also focusing your heart and mind on Him, being still in His presence. Psalm 37 verse 7 commands, Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for Him. This verse isn't suggesting a casual approach towards God. Rather, it emphasizes the need for an intense, concentrated effort in listening for His voice. It means setting aside our own agendas, quieting our minds, and focusing on what God may be trying to communicate to us. Waiting patiently for God's voice can be a challenging task, especially in our fast-paced world. However, it's an essential step in understanding His will and purposes for our lives. Remember, 
God's timing is always perfect. He speaks when he knows we're ready to hear and capable to respond. So, don't rush the process. The prophet Habakkuk gives us a perfect example of waiting on God. In Habakkuk 2 verse 1, he says, I will stand at my watch and station myself on the ramparts, I'll look to see what he'll say to me. This is the posture we should have, a heart prepared to hear, a spirit willing to receive, and a mind set on waiting for God's divine voice. Such patient waiting cultivates spiritual growth, deepens our faith, and strengthens our relationship with God. Chapter 16 Recognizing God's Promptings Amid the hum of everyday life, discerning God's gentle nudges or promptings can truly enhance your spiritual journey, helping you navigate the path He's laid out for you. These divine signs often come subtly, requiring a keen spiritual awareness to recognize them. Firstly, you must understand that God communicates with us in a variety of ways. He may use circumstances, people, or even the quiet whisperings of the Holy Spirit to convey His will. Consider the story of Elijah in 1 Kings 19 verses 11-12, where God wasn't in the powerful wind, earthquake, or fire, but in a still small voice. To recognize God's promptings, you must develop a deep, personal relationship with Him. This involves regular prayer, Bible study, and reflection. As you grow closer to God, you'll become more attuned to His voice and better able to discern His promptings from your own thoughts or desires. Remember, God's promptings align with His Word and His character. If you feel a prompting that contradicts Scripture or leads to actions inconsistent with God's love, it's likely not from Him. The Bible in James 1 verse 17 reminds us that, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who doesn't change like shifting shadows. Recognizing God's promptings is an ongoing process that requires patience, faith, and spiritual sensitivity. As you cultivate these qualities, you'll find that discerning His voice becomes a natural part of your spiritual walk. Chapter 17 Trusting in God's Timing While recognizing God's promptings is crucial, it's equally important to trust in His perfect timing, knowing that He unfolds His plans in our lives at the right moment. It is not always simple to wait on God's timing. You may face situations where you can't see the path ahead, and it's tempting to take matters into your own hands. But remember, God's timing is always perfect, even when it doesn't align with ours. Trust is a cornerstone of faith, and it's coupled with patience. The Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1 that, there is a time for everything, and a season for every activity under the heavens. So, when you're in a waiting season, remember that God is at work. His plans aren't limited by our temporal perspective, and He's never late. Having faith in God's timing means understanding that He sees the bigger picture. You may face trials, but these trials don't signify His absence. Rather, they're often part of His plan to strengthen your faith and prepare you for what's ahead. As Romans 8 verse 28 assures us, and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who've been called according to His purpose. Lastly, trusting in God's timing is a journey, not a destination. It's a continuous process of surrender, patience, and faith. So, stay prayerful, keep your heart open to His promptings, and remember that He holds your life in His hands, guiding you according to His perfect and loving timing. Chapter 18 Journaling Your Spiritual Insights As your trust in God's timing deepens, it can be beneficial to start documenting the spiritual insights you gain through this journey. Journaling these insights serves not only as a record of your spiritual growth but also as a tool for reflection and meditation. Your journal can become a sacred space where you dialogue with God, reflecting on His Word and the unique ways He's speaking to you. Don't feel pressured to write lengthy entries or to journal every day. Instead, let it be an organic process, flowing naturally from your time spent in prayer and contemplation. You might be wondering what to write. It's your journey, so there's no right or wrong way to do it. You could jot down verses that have spoken to you, questions you have for God, 
or insights you've gleaned from sermons or Bible studies. You might also write about experiences where you've seen God's hand at work, or prayers that have been answered in surprising ways. Remember, this isn't a test, and there's no grade. It's simply a tool to help you engage more deeply with God. As you review your entries over time, you'll likely see patterns and themes emerging, giving you a clearer picture of God's work in your life. Embrace this practice of journaling as a way to hear God in the silence. It's a powerful means of documenting your spiritual journey, fostering a deeper relationship with God, and growing in your understanding of His will and His ways. Chapter 19 Engaging in Contemplative Prayer Delving into the practice of contemplative prayer, you'll find it's more than just presenting requests or praises to God, it's a transformative process of quieting your mind, focusing on God's presence, and patiently listening for His still, small voice. This kind of prayer, deeply rooted in Christian tradition, is a profound method of seeking to experience a deeper intimacy with God. Contemplative prayer isn't about asking for specific solutions or outcomes. Instead, it's about surrendering your thoughts, emotions, and desires to God, allowing His wisdom and peace to permeate your being. This silent surrender shifts your focus from self to God, opening the door for divine communication. The Bible, in Psalm 46 verse 10, advises us to be still and know that I'm God. This command isn't merely about physical stillness, but a deep spiritual tranquility where you acknowledge God's sovereignty. Implement this by consciously quieting your mind, pushing aside worldly concerns, and simply resting in God's presence. However, it's vital to remember that hearing from God in this manner doesn't always occur instantly, it requires patience, persistence, and faith. Quieting your mind and waiting calmly might be difficult, especially in today's fast-paced environment, but it is a skill worth developing. As you grow in this practice, you'll likely find that the silence becomes not just a place to hear from God, but also a space of spiritual renewal, where your soul finds rest and your faith is strengthened. This is the beauty and power of engaging in contemplative prayer. Chapter 20 Connecting with God Through Worship In your spiritual journey, connecting with God through worship forms a vital cornerstone, shaping not only your relationship with the divine but also your understanding of His majesty and love. Worship is more than a mere ritual or exercise, it's a heartfelt expression of love, adoration, and reverence towards God. Echoing the psalmist in Psalm 95 verse 6, Come, let's bow down in worship, Let's kneel before the Lord our Maker, you're invited into a transformative experience that transcends the physical realm. Worship isn't limited to songs or prayers but encompasses a lifestyle of honor towards God. When you worship, you're acknowledging God's sovereignty, aligning your will with His, and creating space for His presence in your life. As John 4 verse 24 says, God is spirit, and His worshipers must worship in the spirit and in truth. This implies an intimate, authentic connection, not a performance or a show. Moreover, worship serves as a conduit for divine communication. As you exalt God, you might find that He speaks to you in these moments of profound connection. Remember, though, that hearing from God isn't necessarily about audible voices or dramatic encounters. Often, it's a gentle nudge, a stirring in your spirit, or an inexplicable peace, rooted in your relationship with Him. Ultimately, worship is a conscious decision to connect with God, to honor Him for who He is, and to acknowledge His Lordship over your life. As you engage in worship, may you find a deeper connection with God, a richer understanding of His love, and a more profound sense of His presence. Chapter 21 Inviting God into your everyday life Cultivating a relationship with God doesn't have to be confined to formal worship or quiet moments of prayer, rather, it's about inviting Him into the entirety of your everyday life. This isn't a sporadic engagement, rather a consistent, intentional act of surrendering all areas of your life to divine direction. In the Bible, 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 17 urges us to pray without ceasing, which doesn't necessarily mean being on your knees all day, but maintaining a continuous, conscious awareness of God's presence in all situations. 
you could start by inviting God into your daily routines. As you rise from sleep, thank Him for the new day. As you prepare meals, praise Him for His provision. Make your work a service to Him, your interactions a reflection of His love. Gradually, you'll notice His presence permeating every facet of your existence, thereby nurturing a deeper relationship with Him. Chapter 22 Being Attentive to God's Whispers As you weave God into the fabric of your daily life, it's equally important to develop an attentiveness to His quiet whispers, those subtle nudges and prompts that guide your steps and decisions. You're not merely listening for audible sounds or seeking grandiose signs from above, but fine-tuning your spiritual antennae to pick up the gentle, often overlooked signals. These divine whispers come in various ways, an unexpected thought, a sudden urge to help someone, a feeling of peace amidst chaos, or a scripture verse that strikes deeply into your heart. Recognizing them requires an open heart, a quiet mind, and a willingness to slow down amidst the hustle and bustle of life. God's whispers, though soft, are replete with wisdom and guidance. In 1 Kings 19 verse 12, we observe that God spoke to Elijah not in the wind, earthquake, or fire, but in a gentle whisper. This biblical instance teaches us that God often communicates in subtleties, reminding us of the need to be still and know that He's God, Psalm 46 verse 10. In the silence, God's whispers become more apparent. It's a beautiful, intimate way of experiencing His presence and guidance. As you cultivate this attentiveness, you'll come to realize that He speaks more often than you might think. So, pay attention to those moments of inner nudges, those whispers in your heart. They might just be God's way of guiding you, teaching you, and drawing you closer to Him. Chapter 23 Discerning God's Voice from Within Navigating through the cacophony of life's noise, it's key you discern God's voice within, distinguishing it from your own thoughts and desires. This discernment isn't simple, it's a spiritual exercise, requiring patience, humility, and faith. It's about quieting your heart and mind, making space for God's voice to emerge from the silence. You might wonder, what does God's voice sound like? It's not a physical sound, but a spiritual one. It's a whispered truth that resonates in the deepest part of your soul. Often, it's gentle and loving, providing reassurance, guidance, or correction in a way that aligns with biblical teachings. But how can you be sure it's God's voice you're hearing, not just your own thoughts or desires? This discernment comes from knowing God's character as revealed in the Bible. God's voice never contradicts His word. If what you hear aligns with Scripture, it's likely God's voice. If it doesn't, it's probably your own thoughts or desires. Prayer and meditation on Scripture are vital for learning to discern God's voice. Through prayer, you communicate with God, through meditation, you listen to Him. It's a two-way conversation, an ongoing dialogue that deepens your relationship with Him. Discerning God's voice within is a journey of faith. It's a journey that requires commitment, courage, and humility. But it's a journey worth taking, for it leads to a deeper understanding of God's heart and His will for your life. So take the time to listen, to discern, and to respond to God's voice within. Chapter 24 Nurturing a Relationship with God Building a relationship with God isn't just about spiritual exercises, it's about actively seeking Him in every moment, embracing His presence in your daily life. The Bible imparts that God desires to have a personal relationship with each one of us, Jeremiah 29 verse 13. Therefore, Nurturing this relationship requires a conscious commitment on your part. An essential first step is to engage with the scriptures. The Bible, God's Word, is the primary method He uses to communicate with us. So, delve into it, not just for knowledge, but to understand His character, His promises, and His plan for your life. Read it with a prayerful heart and let it guide your actions and decisions. Prayer is another vital aspect. It's not just a routine or a religious duty, it's a sincere conversation with your Creator. It's about expressing your thoughts, your fears, your gratitude, and your hopes to Him. 
Remember, prayer is a two-way communication, take time to listen to what he's to say. Additionally, cultivating obedience is crucial. This doesn't mean following a set of rules blindly, but it's about aligning your will with God's. Obedience stems from love and trust in Him. It's about choosing His way over yours, even when it seems challenging. Lastly, surround yourself with godly influences, people who inspire you to grow in faith. They can provide wise counsel, encouragement, and accountability. Chapter 25 Finding Joy in God's Presence As you journey deeper into your spiritual relationship, Finding joy in God's presence becomes a key aspect of your faith walk. In the silence, you can experience a joyful connection with God, hear His whispers, and feel the fulfillment of His divine presence. Bible references will guide you to understanding the importance of joyful stillness in deepening your spiritual connection. Joyful Silence Connection While it might seem challenging at first, You'll find immense joy in God's presence when you embrace the practice of silent prayer, opening your heart and mind to divine whispers. This profound connection, often referred to as, joyful silence, is a sacred space where you can experience God's presence intimately. It's in these quiet moments that you're able to fully attune to His voice, leading to a deeper spiritual understanding and a heightened sense of peace. Just as Psalm 46 verse 10 encourages us to, be still, and know that I'm God, so too does this practice reinforce the joy of simply being in His presence. Divine Presence Fulfillment After relishing the joyful silence, you may find yourself yearning for more, for a sense of fulfillment that only the Divine Presence of God can provide. This longing is more than just a desire, it's a spiritual need stitched into your very soul. The psalmist understood this, stating, in your presence there's fullness of joy, Psalm 16 verse 11. In God's company, you'll find completeness, a sense of wholeness that the world can't offer. You're not alone in this quest. Countless people in biblical times sought God's presence for fulfillment. Moses was one, he found satisfaction in God's presence, Exodus 33 verse 14. Hearing God's whispers. In the stillness and quiet, you may begin to discern the gentle whispers of God, an intimate communication that brings profound joy and peace. His whispers aren't loud interruptions, they're subtle nudges, soft murmurs in your soul. You'll find that these whispers often come when you're focused on Him, anchored in His Word, the Bible. Psalm 46 verse 10, Be still, and know that I'm God, guides us to this tranquility. You'll find a joy that transcends circumstance, a peace that surpasses understanding. The art of hearing God's whispers isn't in striving to hear, but rather in resting to listen. It's a practice, a holy habit that deepens your relationship with Him. So, tune your heart to His frequency, and let His whispers guide your steps. Deepening Spiritual Connection Cultivating a deeper spiritual connection is like embarking on a profound journey towards finding true joy in God's presence. It's an intimate process that fosters a sense of unity and fulfillment. You may discover that as your relationship with God strengthens, you feel more secure, loved, and at peace. Your connection can be enriched through prayer, meditation, and diligent study of the scriptures. As you immerse yourself in these practices, you'll find your spirit becoming more in tune with God's. You can also deepen your connection by expressing gratitude for His blessings, acknowledging His sovereignty in your life, and striving to follow His commandments. Biblical Joyful Stillness As you grow closer to God, finding joy in His presence can often be a profound experience of biblical joyful stillness. This isn't merely about being quiet, it's a state of inner peace and tranquility that transcends external circumstances. Psalm 46 verse 10 urges, Be still, and know that I'm God. This stillness isn't passive, it's an active, intentional quieting of your heart and mind to focus on God's presence. It's in this divine silence, you'll experience His comforting presence, leading to joy. In the Cathedral of Silence, you've found a divine dialogue. Embrace this hallowed harmony between your heart and His whispers. In this serene sanctuary, 
God's voice emerges from the stillness, guiding you in His wisdom. As you nurture this sacred bond, the joy of His presence becomes your soul's song. Remember, hearing God in silence isn't a one-time event, but a lifelong journey of faith, love, and divine revelation. Thanks for listening.